Many historical accounts state that Japan was a cruel country during its colonial period. Countries that were colonized by Japan included several countries in mainland Asia. However, there has been little discussion about the Nanking Massacre that occurred in 1937 because almost all records of the Nanking Massacre have been destroyed. The Nanking Massacre, also known as the Nanjing Massacre, is the darkest and most brutal chapter in history. Over the course of six weeks, hundreds of thousands of people fell victim to the most savage massacre in history. The victims included not only soldiers but also the elderly, women, and children. But before we continue, I'd like you to subscribe first so that you won't miss out on other historical videos. If you've already subscribed, let's continue. <laughs> Nanjing is a city with a reputation as one of the centers of literary, artistic, and political activities in China. Nanjing has been the capital of China since the 3rd century, but the city has repeatedly experienced invasions and acts of violence. If we look back, Japan was actually the first country in Asia to successfully undergo an industrial revolution. And to meet its needs within the country, Japan began invading East Asian countries such as Korea and China. From 1904 to 1905, Japan achieved a surprising victory over the Russian Empire. With this victory, Japan gained control of Korea and took over Russian interests in northern China. On 18 September 1931, Japan initiated the Mukden incident by detonating a Japanese railway and accusing China as the perpetrator. With this pretext, Japan then had a motive to invade resource-rich Manchuria. The Mukden incident was one of the early clashes between the Republic of China and the Empire of Japan, which later became the trigger for a larger conflict. In 1937, a war between China and Japan officially broke out after the Marco Polo Bridge incident. Japanese forces attacked the main gateway to Beijing, triggering a conflict known as the Second Sino-Japanese War. This war took place before and during World War II and ended with Japan's unconditional surrender to the Allies on 9 September 1945. From August to October 1937, intense Chinese resistance in the vital port city of Shanghai resulted in a horrific battle that was hailed as one of the largest battles in Asia. Although Japan emerged victorious, the fierce resistance from the Chinese side and the high number of Japanese casualties fueled Japan's growing hatred towards China and its people. Now, their next target was Nanjing, which was the capital of China at that time. In December 1937, a horrifying event unfolded as the Japanese military invaded Nanjing, the then capital of China. Japanese forces moved towards Nanjing from Shanghai a port city located 190 miles along the Yangtze River. The weary and burdened Chinese forces, following their defeat in Shanghai, were forced to withdraw from Nanjing. The Chinese soldiers knew all too well that death was preferable to falling into the hands of the Japanese army. As a result, the city and its inhabitants were left without protection from the onslaught of the Japanese forces. The first troops to enter were the Japanese Central China Expeditionary Army, led by General Matsui Iwane. Prior to their arrival, news of the atrocities they had committed during their journey through China had spread widely. The people of Nanjing at that time fled in panic, with many victims falling to the ground, groaning and screaming, while the streets, alleys, and drains flowed with blood. <laughs> But before delving into how Japan treated the people of Nanjing inhumanely, 
I want to clarify that the exact number of reported victims is still not fully confirmed and remains a subject of debate. Some sources claim the number of victims to be around 40,000, while others mention figures as high as 1 million. However, based on various sources, it is estimated that around 200,000 to 300,000 people fell victim to the brutality of the Japanese in this city. After defeating China, the hungry and exhausted Japanese soldiers sought revenge for their fallen comrades in the previous battles. Entire families were slaughtered, including the elderly and infants, while tens of thousands of women were raped. According to reports, it is estimated that between 20,000 to 80,000 women were raped and brutally tortured, including young girls and elderly women. Japanese soldiers would sometimes enter houses, drag out women and children, and subject them to group rapes. Often, after they were done with their victims, they would also kill the women. The victims of rape were sometimes tortured beforehand, such as pregnant women being cut open and sodomized with bamboo sticks or bayonets until they died in agony. Many women chose to have abortions or even commit suicide rather than give birth to a child of the oppressor. An American missionary in Nanjing, James M. McCallum, wrote in his diary, Rape. 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 We estimate at least 1,000 cases per night, and many also during the day. These women were victims of the group and individual rapes committed by Japanese soldiers. Many bodies lay on the streets for months, rotting under the sun. <laughs> One of the insane and inhumane policies of the Japanese emperor's government was the three alls policy, which encompassed kill all, burn all, loot all. Japanese soldiers began their actions by disarming Chinese soldiers and proceeded to massacre both soldiers and civilian residents of Nanjing for six weeks. The majority of the victims of the Nanjing massacre were civilian men because the Japanese army commanders believed that the Chinese soldiers had abandoned their uniforms and mingled with the local population. Continuing their determination to destroy the city in rooted in vengeance, Japanese troops also looted and burned at least one-third of the buildings in Nanjing. They didn't care whether the victims were rich or poor. For the Japanese soldiers, the massacre in Nanjing was just like a game. Two Japanese soldiers named Toshiaki Mukai and Tsuyoshi Noda challenged each other in a race to be the first to injure 100 people with their swords. Even worse, the people killed by these two men were not soldiers but unarmed and helpless victims. They were gathered in lines and then hacked from end to end. The bodies were then collected in a pit and buried without gravestones. Japanese soldiers often carried out these massacres when they were drunk. Therefore, many people in Nanjing would run away in fear when they saw Japanese soldiers in a drunken state. However, amidst the rampant massacre, Western businessmen and missionaries established the Nanjing Safety Zone as a place of refuge for women, children, and non-combatant residents in the city. John Rabe, a German trade official and member of the Nazi Party, stayed in the city to help other European civilians remain safe from the Battle of Nanjing and the atrocities. Over time, Rabe and his staff provided protection to Chinese citizens within their diplomatic safe zone, and it is known that Rabe saved thousands to tens of thousands of people from the massacre. However, after the war, Rabe was arrested by the British as a senior member of the Nazi party, accused of war crimes. His family faced difficulties, even after his release. In honor of Rabe's service, the people of Nanjing requested assistance from the Nanjing government to support his family, and eventually, the mayor sent food and $2,000 to his family. The Nanjing rape is a horrifying and brutal tragedy in which the lives of thousands of innocent people were brutally taken. This event shook the world and served as evidence of the atrocities committed by the Japanese army at that time. The anger over the Nanjing incident continues to color the China-Japan relationship to this day. Nowadays, this story seems to be covered up by the Japanese government, 
and many young people and students in Japan are unaware of the dark history of their country's invasion of China. That concludes the heart-wrenching story of the massacre in Nanjing. I hope this video can be informative, and please remember to share it with your friends. Thank you, and goodbye.